Hello everyone, welcome to Factorio. This is Ryan from Tangerine Music Labs and we're going to be do a tutorial. Wait, did I say tutorial? Factorio. We're gonna do a Factorio tutorial on circle belts. Yeah, okay. So, circle belt factories, what are they? They are a factory where you primarily place all of your items in a centralized belt like in this and you put everything on this and you pull everything off of it. It's very, very messy. As you can see here, we have all types of all kinds of stuff just floating around randomly. But uh, yeah, it, and it, but it's possible to make this work. Even in this crazy uh, Bob's Mods plus Angel Ores combination. I'm really, really close to the end. And it only took a really long time, but uh, you know, I had fun. It's just a different way to play. So uh okay so there are actually a few advantages to um circle ball factories which is one they're very flexible so you could you know make a factory here tell it to make gears i could make a factory over here and make it make it you know tell it to make gears it doesn't matter because you can pull anything from anywhere uh, so it gives you lots of flexibility in terms of like positioning and uh, where you want to make things and you don't really have to worry about like oh I gotta bring that thing over there you know because everything you ever need is from all here now the second thing is uh, what do you call it's also very very resource efficient um, because uh, what you put on the belt. Um, the thing is, you don't want your belt to get saturated, you know? Like, normally, seeing a belt like this, well, if it was covered on both sides, especially, um, well, let me see if I can find a saturated belt. Yeah, like this, right? You want, you normally want to see your belt like this, full up on both sides and completely ready to go. But in circle belt factories, that's actually not good because it uh, if your belt is saturated, it blocks uh, other things from getting on the belt, and that's bad. So uh, the way you have to think about it is that it's uh, what's important is the balance of resources you have on the belt. You want a good balance of things uh, according to... And, and the balance is going to naturally reflect the, the demand um, your factory has because it's you have to adjust your input according to what you need so in that way uh, you're only producing what you need most of the time and it's really really efficient uh, resource wise also energy efficient I mean look at this uh, oh yeah we're at our peak okay this is the highest it's ever been but it's 16 megawatts that's less than one uh, uh, steam engine chunk right and look how big this thing is, and we're almost towards the end. In a normal, like, normally in a factory like this, you know, you'd be well over 100 something in power usage. So it's very, you know, eco friendly, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Uh, and what's the other advantage? Um, right, it's also very space efficient because uh, you're cramming so many different things into one belt. I mean, it just makes sense, you know? Uh, you have more things on one belt, and which requires, which means that you require less belt overall. We tried to, you know, give a belt to each one of these item types. So, man, you're gonna be like, the whole thing, the whole thing is gonna be belts. And I've seen lots of games already do that, especially in mods. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm gonna clean that up later. But anyway, okay, so, uh, okay, so saturated belts are bad. Balanced belts are good. Uh, when the belts are empty, that's actually good because it means that you're using all of the resources that you are producing. But you're gonna run into, uh, issues where your belt gets too full and you're gonna have to do something about it, so... Uh, there's a couple of tools you can use. Um, okay, first is more of a concept than a tool, but it's a uh, random sampling. So what I mean by that is, so I have a thing here going in. 
anything to carry, anything to put it down. Now you're probably wondering, okay, what's the point of this? I mean, it's just taking stuff and then putting back, putting it back down. What's the point? Well, uh, the point is that you want to actually. Oh shoot! Put away my. There you go. So we want to count what's actually in here. Maybe on the right side there, uh, you can see that it's picking up a lot of things. Uh, let's turn it off just for a little while, just so we can get a little bit bigger sample. Sample size. All right, that should be good enough. Uh, okay, there we go. So if you look on the right side there, you know, you can see that we have a lot of iron in there, a lot of tin, some solar plates, um, then steel, a little bit of gold, and random things coming in here and there. Now, if you look at that and you look on the actual belt, uh, you're going to see that it's actually a fairly representative picture of what actually exists on the belt itself. So this way you can actually count what's on the belt in a indirectly without actually having to wire it up directly. Like, you know, if there's a real world, you wouldn't be able to like n just know what's on this belt, right? We have to come up with a process, an indirect process to kind of get an idea of what's here without actually counting everything. So that's uh, random sampling. Yeah. And I think you'll find, you know, uh, uh, you you cannot uh, control the input there. You have to let it go by random. And uh, I think that makes some people a little bit uncomfortable. But uh, I think you're going to find that no matter what, no matter how many times you do this, uh, the random method is actually fairly accurate, you know? Mm. Right, you know, gets there's a gold there. So you know, this will have to give it some time to build up, but uh, you're gonna find that it it's actually pretty close to uh, what's actually on the belt, and it's a nice, the best way to get accuracy is actually through randomness. Yeah, kind of a weird thing to think about. But okay, so next, uh, next tool that's the random sampling. Next two is a buffer. Now you're gonna have situations where it's like, oh my god, I have like way too much uh, iron on this belt. So this is uh, actually a controlled input. So I'm gonna use the filter inserter here. And uh, buffers need the output needs to be slower than the input for reasons I will explain in a second. So this is gonna pick up all most of the iron stuff that comes in similar situation again it goes in and then comes out okay what's the point well uh, since this thing is faster it's actually building up a buffer uh, let's wire this up so you can see a little easier all right so though you look at it the buffer you know it's getting higher and higher gradually Uh, just to speed things up, I'm gonna throw in an extra. Let's just pretend this has been running for a few minutes. So now we have 400. Now, what are we doing with this, right? What is this point? Well, okay, um, let's say that something changes in the factory and then we need uh, more gears for some reason. Uh, let me get this fast one, because just to make a point, yeah? So, we have this factory making gears. That means it's going to consume more iron down the line. Probably to the even to the point where there's nothing left. Yep, so pretty much there's no iron coming here through now. But, because we have this buffer here, 
it's actually still putting it down, you know? This is not working at all, but it's pulling from the buffer to compensate for the fact that there's no uh, iron coming in anymore. So, uh, yeah, that's what the buffer is for. It's there to regulate the flow. I think it's called uh, flow control in other situations. So this stuff is used in real life. I'm gonna, you know, say that over and over. So it's uh, some useful things to know. Uh, okay. Yep. So those are two basic tools. Um, I'm not gonna explain other stuff. You can watch the series if you really want to know what all that other stuff is for. But um, but I do want to show you, and this is the culmination of those two ideas put into practice. Now. Uh, you know, this is just random sampling. Same thing. I'm just pulling off things by random, stuffing it in this chest. I have it set to one uh, item. Uh, you know, I'm trying to just pull one item per thing, just so that uh, we get a diver a better diversity in the um, inputs here. Uh, what would happen is that it would stack up and you know, kind of screw things up. Well. But anyway, uh, yeah. So it's a random sample here. This is also buffer because it pulls, you know, the stuff on it. But if you look on the bottom right there, we have, uh, because these are logistic chests, um, it keeps track of everything in one big network. And I even have a menu here where I can check everything. So yeah, so it's only counting this, these are counting the uh, items in these chests here. Only here. And uh, and so we actually don't know what's on, you know, what's over here or whatever here, but we're making an educated guess based on random sampling. And actually, uh, you know, so let's say, okay, we have 700 steel plates in that thing. Here's the steel plates. Now let's just uh, say that we want more steel plates. So this is set that to if there's less than 400, it's not going to move, and it's doing you know, it's following its instructions. But we want a little bit more steel, so let's set it to 800. Now this is going to work again, and this steel will go all the way across the map, uh, across the factory, go around come back and, you know, contribute to whatever, wherever it's needed, as well as back into the buffer. So if it eventually ma makes it here, then, you know, we're going to have a higher number in steel plates and it'll shut down after it goes over 800, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, one thing about this factory is that what makes it very difficult and sometimes frustrating is that the decisions that you make take a while to kick in and maybe maybe that's the most realistic part of this whole thing you know I mean, uh, because you know it's like hey even this change I made here right it needs the steel needs to go on the belt needs to go all the way around the factory uh, it has to go all the way around it has to get picked up by here again and we're not uh, sure I mean it's gonna increase it of course but by how many? Mm, you know, there's just not enough time to math out everything. So, yeah, you have to use more of your intuition and you know play things by feel. The numbers mean do mean things, but they're not exact. So, uh, yeah, and, and when things are changing all the time, it's very easy to lose your mind, which I have been uh, in this campaign because there's just so many things to worry about with the mods and all that stuff so yeah that's basically it now uh yeah that covers everything but i am pretty happy with this thing how this thing works it's very nice and i would recommend building something like this or similar to it if you decide to take on this challenge uh this made my like my life a lot easier because i didn't have to wire up every single output uh with circuit networks which is the case you know, this is what I had to do 
before I figure this thing out. So, okay, well, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And yeah, uh, hope to see you in the uh, series. Um, yeah, it's a very long uh, campaign with uh, Angel's Ors and Bob's Mods. And it was kind of crazy, but I did enjoy myself. And we're getting very close to the end. So, um, yeah, I hope you'll join me in the stream there. Okay, well, thanks for watching. And hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.